So uh, as the title suggests, Adobe Fresco is not for you. If, and there's a few reasons why it would not be for you and a few reasons why it would be for you. And so today we're gonna talk about those things. We're gonna cover a little bit about what Adobe Fresco does is and how you integrate it into your workflow. And so just at the top of my head right now, I want you to know that if you don't have a creative workflow, a creative process for, from taking an idea of a drawing, an illustration, all the way to a finished product that's ready for the streets, then you need to figure out what that workflow is for you. And so once you have that workflow and the steps that you're gonna take to, to take a, an idea from a sketch to a work in progress to complete illustration down to um, a product or service, then you'll know which tools you need. Then you'll know what's your budget that you can uh, count on to include certain software and hardware and materials. And, uh, and then that'll help you determine what type of software is going to work for you. And so that's where this, my statement starts when I say Adobe Fresco is not for you if you don't have a workflow. Adobe Fresco is not for you and that stands for any artwork or any software but specifically today it's Adobe Fresco. Adobe Fresco is not for you if you don't have clients and um, I made a statement early this week as soon as the Adobe Fresco dropped it, it came out on iOS on Tuesday and uh, made a statement saying something along the lines that professional artists can see the value of paying for something like create a cloud like Adobe Fresco and all the other software that's out there whereas recreational artists do not and um, and so when I say recreational artists I just mean someone who is not getting paid for their work Be, whether they choose to get paid for it or do it for fun or they do it to experiment the person who does not make any money off their art is not at the same level of business mindset as a professional artist the professional artist and I'm speaking from my personal experience and some of the artists that I know doesn't include every artist but the majority of professional artists they have a budget they have a, a budget for what they to, to pay for the things they're going to need to provide their client with the artwork that the client is paying for that professional artist has price points for their time price points for their gear price points for any extra amenities they need to account for and uh, and so when they put all that together and agree to charge a client a particular price point then the creative cloud pricing the computer pricing the devices that you use if you're a photographer the gear if you're a videographer videographer the video equipment all that stuff becomes part of doing business so a professional artist sees the value in the things that they use and why whereas a recreational artist and i would just say an artist i just wanted to use the word recreational to separate them from the professional artist but there's all types of artists and the word artist applies to anybody i believe anybody who can draw a stick figure if you can draw a line and a piece of paper and with chalk with ink with paintbrush it doesn't matter if you put paintbrush on the wall one time that's it you're an artist but when you're not a professional artist and you're not charging for your work then the things that you spend money on add up and they come out your pocket and I know lots of these kind of artists and uh, I know artists who sell artwork every now and then but they have a uh, a, a consistent job they've been in the job for many years they have a career that's separate from their art and uh, and they do art every now and then or on their on the um, spare time and so then when they do sell they have money that they can put towards um, some uh, gear equipment supplies but most of the time they're paying for these supplies out of their own pocket and so that is a different type of mindset when you're spending money and uh and of course you have a job you're getting paid a certain particular paycheck and then you look at your list of bills you look at um your rent 
food, transportation, insurance, family, etc. Right? And then somewhere in there, you're trying to squeeze some some of that money for our supplies. And so that type of artist then has a different way of accounting for the Creative Cloud, fifty dollars a month. They have a different way of accounting for a computer. And I don't understand any professional artist who does not have uh, two working computers. They don't have to be perfect. My computers are not new. None of them are new. None of them are from this year. I think I have one computer that's from 2018, several from 2017, several from 2016. Um, you have to have a backup machine because as a professional, you need to have a particular set of equipment and gear that's ready to help you produce the work that you're being paid for. Otherwise, then you can't earn and that sets you further back in your career. Uh, thank you for Joshua Pomeroy for saying next week to explain it. Uh, I'm trying. Thank you for uh, chiming in. I am trying. I want to make sure that we as artists understand what it is that we have to look at and consider when we're following our art life into whatever direction we wish. And so the recreational artists, or so those artists who are not professional, and let's just say artists, the average artist that just creates for themselves, when they start looking at the cost of an iPad, of a computer, of a, any kind of device, any kind of equipment, gear, canvas, uh, paintbrushes, and paints, that is something that you, that you really have to choose whether or not to get and spend on because your your income comes from a daily job or a different kind of career that has to pay for your life and so what a regular artist or an artist who is not getting paid for the work has to consider is different than what a professional artist has to consider and have in their what do you call it a toolbox you the higher up on the professional side you are the more things you're going to have to consider to have and you need to know that you have a backup so that you can perform that good or service so with that in mind here are two of my devices i have uh, ipad pro on the right and i have a surface pro on the left all the way to the very left i have another uh, iPad Pro and this one's a smaller one that is what I use for live streaming and I have Cinemaker running off of that. This is the screen for the iPad Pro. This is the screen for the Surface Pro. In my daily life and in my career as a professional artist, I want to have the things that professional artists have so that I can perform as well as any professional artist. That is part of the art business. Once you set off on that path, you don't just want to be an artist and say, hey, I can draw. You want to be the artist that says, hey, I can draw, and this is the backup that I have to support that. And it sets you, starts setting you apart from other artists who are just hoping that someone, somebody someday says, hey, let me get you at your house and let's get, let's get this project and here's a ton of money. As a professional artist, you have to have you have to be well-rounded when it comes to your um, creative process, your talent, your skills, and then the business mindset to create the career that you want. So, who is uh, Adobe Fresco for? It is for the artist who has a creative process already in mind. And uh, the Adobe Fresco is for someone who already has the Creative Cloud. If you don't have the Creative Cloud, then you don't need Adobe Fresco because whatever you're using to create now, you already have the tools. You figured it out. If you have the Creative Cloud, then just add that Adobe Fresco and you're good because it's part of the, the subscription anyway. So there's nothing that's, that you're coming out the pocket that's any extra. But if money is the problem, money is the issue for you, then I suggest that you find out ways to get that creative cloud at a different price than the $50. I'm a subscriber, all right? I'm a cre I have the creative cloud. My wife has the creative cloud. A lot of people that I work with, if you work with me, you've gotten the creative cloud. We find ways to pay less than the $50. And I heard something that somebody say something about how now it's like 52 bucks or something like that with taxes. I don't know. I don't pay that. 
What I have done in the last few years is I've entered contests with Adobe. And twice, twice in three years, I've won a Creator Cloud account for one year subscription. It's not that hard. They give them away all the time. There's, if you follow the Twitter, if you follow the uh, Behance, if you follow the YouTube channel for Creator Cloud, they're constantly giving away a Creator Cloud account, a subscription, all the time. That's one way to get a Creator Cloud that's free. Another way is to be a student or be a teacher. You gotta have that eat.edu email account. But I've heard, and I've not done it, from other people who they say that if they just check off that they're a student, they get the $20 price for the Creator Cloud per month. I'm not saying that is right or wrong or that you have to lie or that you tell the truth. All I'm saying is that people are getting the $20 a month to create a cloud account. Why don't you do that? If money is an issue and you're trying to keep your expenses down, there was a time in my life when I was making a transition from the first half of my art career to what it is now, and I had to scale down. I scaled down hard. I scaled down on everything, on the on the cable TV, on hanging out in the club and spending money on entertainment, I scaled down hard. And, uh, and so, of course, sometimes we have to do that. And, uh, and that means if certain things we're not using, then they got to go. So if you're in that type of uh, setup right now where you're scaling down things, then you have to find ways around that will get you what you want at the price point that's going to work so that you have the tools that you need, that you want. Another way that people have been getting the Creative Cloud subscription at a lesser price is by canceling their account. And there are retention tools that the Creative Cloud um, agents are using to keep you on, um, on, the, uh, on a subscription uh, plan. And I've seen that already on Facebook. Other artists have posted it. They talk about what they've done, what they say, and it happens. $10 a month. So I say all of these things to say that we have to understand our process. We have to understand our creativity and our tools to find whether or not something that exists out there is going to help us produce the work that we need to produce, whether for a client, for ourselves, for creative expression, for exploration, or for our, in our career. And once you have an idea of what those things are, then you can start determining, well, I do need to create a cloud. I do want to have Photoshop. I do want to have Illustrator. I'm willing to try out all these other apps to find whether or not they fit my workflow. But the moment that you're set, come into a situation where the corporate business says, these are the machines we use, this is the, the software that we use, you need to be prepared. If that's the job you want, you need to be prepared to know how to handle that software. And so in my case, um, I got to try it. I got to I got to see if it works in my workflow. And I'm going to show you how Adobe Fresco works in my workflow today. But I got to try it out so that I can see whether or not it fits. And then I determine whether a particular software or app is good for me. I do not want to be the person that says is Adobe Fresco the procreate killer. Is Adobe Fresco the new king of the iPad drawing tools? No, because my situation, my art career, and my process is particular to myself. And artists like me who produce the kind of work that I produce, vector illustration, and uh, and so then th those tools may fit, those tools may not. But there is no such thing of whether or not there is an app that is the top app on this particular platform. There's no such thing whether an app is going to knock off another app. It's all about the artist and you should know who you are and what you do. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine. He is uh, an artist like I am in terms of we, we do a lot of vector work, but he's a big time traditional artist too. Like this dude is amazing. And we were talking about somehow we got into talking about the creative cloud and uh, and I asked him, we were talking about some apps. I think that's what it was. And I said, look, if you got the Creative Cloud, those apps will integrate with your workflow. And, and before I went on about it, I, said, I asked, I said, do you have the Creative Cloud? Because if you don't, then it's not going to matter. And he said, no, yeah, I got the Creative Cloud. I said, like, cool. Well, now I can tell you about how it works. 
and, uh, and but he took a moment to tell me, listen, I pay for the Creative Cloud because for the past 20 years, the, creative, the Adobe, I've been using Adobe products, Photoshop and Illustrator to build my career. Now I'm at a level in my career that it would not, it would not have happened if I not, had not used those tools to get me there and to master my skills. And so then in that case, because Adobe's put in the work and I've benefited from the software, I'm willing to pay $50 a month right now so that I can keep staying up to date on what I need to do and keep moving forward with my career. And I was like, great, that's a great way to think about it when you know that as part of your creative process, part of your business, software like this is necessary. All right, let me check on this comment here. Good Grace Dunbar. Only thing it has over Procreate is the vector. And, and for now, maybe for in your particular art skills, I don't want to say that anything is better than anything else. Okay, that's, that's my, what I'm trying to say in the last uh, 15 minutes is that what I, what I want, Good Grace, is people to understand their workflow and say, well, this app works for my workflow. That app works for my workflow. And then go with that. And the sentiment online has been, oh, that's no good, or that's n this is better. And the reality is not all artists are the same. However, um, I have tried Procreate's Vector. I have tried, as a matter of fact, I have it here. And this is my iPad. Let me show you my iPad. And I have, where are the apps? Drawing apps. There they are. Oh, is that the, that's the wrong screen. There we go. So I got Procreate, Vectormator, Medibank, Sketchbook. Uh, and Adobe Draw, Affinity Designer, Paintstorm, Graphic, that's Vector right there. I have a lot of different Vector apps and drawing apps on my iPad. And I got, and I paid for all of them just so that I can see whether or not they work for me. And so once I found the ones that work for me, I stay with it. What's worked for me on the iPad has been Adobe Draw and Adobe Sketch. And especially Adobe Draw because I am a Vector artist, so good grace. If you're into vector, I'm into vector. And in my workflow, I want to get into the vector drawing as early as possible once I've already gotten the artwork approved. Once I got the artwork approved, then I can move into the vector and then and get to the finishing artwork. And so the pen tool on the computer, PC or Mac, I'm all in. I've been there for 20 years when it comes to Illustrator. But I like organic looking drawings that are vector and so when adobe draw came out and before that it was a different app and it was called adobe something i forget now um but it, when i learned that you can draw vector images in the ipad and then export from the ipad to your computer on illustrator oh i was hooked i was ready for it i was like beautiful because my workflow includes vector anytime I can add vector tools it works for me I have worked on procreate and with affinity designer and especially with affinity designer as soon as I saw that you can actually edit anchor points in affinity designer oh I was in because now I can use my iPad as a drawing tool that I want to use but I realized that once I export from affinity designer to an Illustrator file and then I open an Illustrator, not everything is vector. Even if inside of Affinity Designer, it is a vector. And that's because Illustrator, there are some things that are proprietary for, Pro, uh, for Affinity Designer that will not work in Illustrator because Illustrator does not recognize it. So it makes it a flat raster layer. And to me, that's a problem because now I spent a lot of time on the iPad working on this vector illustration and now that I need to finalize the file for my clients I there's some things that I can that are not working and I'm gonna have to redo them in Illustrator so to me it feels like an extra t time consumption that I don't get back and it doesn't serve me I have not seen that in Procreate because I have not worked hard uh, long enough in Procreate to figure out what parts work when it comes to vector the reason why I do like Adobe Fresco is that it has all the things that Adobe Draw has plus more, more things that come with, with Adobe Sketch. It combines them plus it adds a whole lot of other tools 
so that you can create all types of art. The only parts that I really care about are the ones that work with vector. So that's a long explanation. If you're still here, let me show you my setup. Here we go. I got the um, surface, uh, the iPad on the right hand side. I got the surface on the left and I'm getting all kinds of text and I don't know who's texting me, but let me go ahead. Um, uh, this evening, I need to send off. Okay. So let's go ahead and, uh, check this out, right? I've been posting on my YouTube channel, some of my work in progress when it comes to Adobe Fresco. I've gotten the feedback that I've gotten the feedback that Adobe Fresco for, for the surface doesn't exist. This guy cuts me out. He cuts me out saying that, uh, that Adobe Fresco is only for iOS and that Adobe has not announced the surface or the PC version. Um, uh, and, uh, and so he cuts me out for that. Um, okay. Now, of course I like, I don't like to get mad. Um, uh, I, I do get a little heated and I was like, man, what the, but fine. That's cool. Jesus. Sorry, you guys. Yes. So, um, so the, he left me a, a mean message. It's on the YouTube channel. I'm not going to delete it. Uh, and I responded in kind. Uh, I had to breathe deep and, and get it together. And just let him know that, listen, I, I have access to some pre-release stuff with Adobe. Um, and that uh, I've been testing uh, Adobe Fresco on the Surface. I have it here on the Surface. There's my Surface. There's uh, my uh, start screen. Adobe Fresco. I am telling you. Bam, there it goes. Adobe Fresco on the surface. Let me show it to you again. There it is. And these are some of my uh, illustrations. And so that, um, that uh, the comment was cussing me out. Um, um, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, but I responded saying, listen, I don't know when it's coming out, but it's coming because, because I'm using it. And uh, so today, that's what I want to do. I just want to show you some of the things with Adobe Fresco and how it fits in my workflow. I also have Adobe Fresco on um, the Surface, I mean, on the iPad Pro. So here's Adobe Fresco. It's right there, right? That's Adobe Fresco. But I also have the pre-release Adobe Fresco. It's right here. There it is. And I have the pre-release for Photoshop. There it is. That's right. Not only that. Uh, next week, I'm going to test Adobe Fresco for iPhone. <laughs> I get excited because for the longest, I've been addicted to creative tools that help me do the things that I like to do. And I enjoy exploring other tools that take me to places that I had not thought of. So it is, um, so when things, I get an um, opportunity to test things out and try things out, I'm all in, I'm doing it, let's go. How do I get picked? I don't get chosen, I'm not chosen for these things. I apply to these things. As soon as I see that Adobe's put out a tweet that says, you know, are you, um, 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 we have a pre, uh, this was a Project Gemini coming out. If you want to, uh, early access, drop your email address. I drop my email address when they say, here's a link to fill out um, an application to be a pre-release user of a Project Gemini. I fill it out when they ask questions like, well, you know, how do you use it? Why would why would you want to use this software? What is it that you do? Who, what kind of artists are you? I answer all those questions and then I get the response that I'm looking for from Adobe, from uh, another app that I test out and I am. Uh, um, very um, well connected with uh, the developers is sketchable on the surface. I am constant communication. I'm paying attention to what they post, what they're saying, so that I can get early access. I can get um, to try out things. I can get a discount. I can get a sponsorship. Anything that will set me apart from the rest of the artists. As a matter of fact, on Tuesday, I will be in New York for a Microsoft event. I sent Microsoft a message. I said, listen, I want to be there. I'm free. 
what do we got to do? They sent me a message and say, hey, fill this out. So I filled it out. Then they send an email and say, hey, fill this other thing out. Okay, I'll fill that out too. Then they say, hey, you're invited. Here's a plane ticket. Here's a hotel. Pfft, all right, I'll go. Who knows what's going to happen at the Microsoft event uh, next week? Who knows what kind of hardware they're going to talk about and so on? Hey, I'm all excited because I get to be one of the people in the room to see this stuff firsthand. Because I set out to connect, to build, and to try out and test. All right, I'm getting to a lot of talking. I'm sorry. And uh, uh, just let me know. And we're going to get into Adobe Fresco. Wait, what? You have Photoshop beta? Yes, I do. Good grace. And you have yet to try Affinity Designer. I only have Affinity Photo. Yeah, I tried. Uh, this is, uh, what is this? Let's get into, uh, let's see, draw. What do I have? Oh, it's Affinity Designer. Yes, Affinity Designer. There it is. Affinity Designer. And you have Photo. Oh, because, uh, yeah, because I like drawing in it. So let's click on it. There it is. Beautiful. Affinity Designer. This is an awesome app. I'm, 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 I'm excited about Procreate 5. Uh, because of the animation, because of whatever. And, uh, and I just want to try it out. I want to see what it's like. So there's a piece I worked on. There's a piece that Affinity Designer shares with you to see uh, how the, 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 the file looks inside the app. I've connected with that artist on Facebook because he's amazing. Then I have, the, uh, there it is, Procreate. Boom. I've worked on one piece only, but I've seen what other artists can do. I do pay attention to a lot of the videos that are out there just to see what artists are make, doing with it. The, the reason why I haven't gone deep into it is because I have a, several projects lined up and I'm constantly working on things that it would, that I don't have time for that learning curve with that app. And, uh, and I'm afraid, just like I explored with Affinity Designer, I'm afraid that once I try something out and it doesn't fit in my workflow, I've wasted my time. So I paid for the app. I got it on my iPad. When I have free time, I'll sit around and sketch on it. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and stick to the things that help me in my workflow. But there's a Adobe Fresco. Uh, there it goes right there. Boom. Adobe Fresco on the iPad. This is the, the release that you can get right now. Download off of uh, the App Store. I have updated my iPad to iPad uh, OS. OS 13. And then there's a piece that I'm working on. And this piece I am working on in, um, in Adobe Fresco. And I have, uh, I started it off as a, let me uh, turn off some things. I started this as a drawing in Sketchable. And when I started this Sketchable drawing, there it is. You can see some of that bottom part that comes from uh, in, um, um, that's the bottom part of the Windows application. As you can see right down here, this is all Windows stuff. All right, that's Windows. Um, in any case, I did the drawing in Sketchable, and then I brought it into Fresco because what I want to do is to make draw it in vector so that I can then. Um, export it to Adobe Illustrator, in which case then it will be all vector. All of this is vector and I'm using a vector brush right here. I'm not going to explore the whole app. I am just going to show you how this fits in my workflow. And so here I am side by side. I'm working in um, Fresco. So we have the vector tool right here and um, good, gra good grace number. The brush creator and Procreate 5 is everything. Thank you. Uh, uh, pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying it out and see what it does. But uh, hopefully it I, is, is easy enough to figure out so that I can figure know right away whether or not it works for me or not. And thank you for uh, the comment that it looks good. So here is um, um, these are all vector lines. I'm using a vector brush. And so I am able to draw with the Apple Pencil on uh, Adobe Fresco and get smooth 
curvy, organic, thin, fat, whatever lines. And, uh, and so now the artwork has a little bit more of an organic feel. So let's turn on this bottom layer and turn down the opacity. Get back to this other layer that I'm, um, that I, this one right here. And I like how, you know, just tap on it. You get the drop down window with all your options. You also have some of those options right here. Uh, you have some more options right there. It's really great. I like it. And if you're used to Adobe software, then the tools are always on the left hand side over here. The, some of the windows are always on the right side. And, uh, and so they keep in that same setup for you to jump right in and know what you're doing. So here we go. Let's go ahead. There aren't any shapes there. Co it's coming. One of the things that is, um, that it, Adobe is letting people know when they start Adobe Fresco is that there's a lot of tools that they have not integrated yet and that they're definitely coming. When is it coming? Who knows? I don't know. I am thankful for the opportunity to, to test things out beforehand so we can give the team's feedback. Um, uh, so whatever they got going on right now, I'm open to it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really to, ready to try it. This little ball is pretty cool because you can use it to erase. You touch the ball and then you use your pencil and it starts to erase. So that's kind of cool too. So let's go like that. Let's go like that. There you go. See, now that I got these little rays here, I can go in and make some erasing. There it is. Boom. So now I grab that layer, turn that off, hit the eyeball, and get back to where I was. There it is. Yes. Now I could, um, like I said, and let me show you from, from this one. I can, there's a little um, circle here, and I tap that circle, and now my my pen turns into an eraser. Come on, here we go, and let's go like that. So now I can erase right to where I need to. Look at that. Yes, and then I can change the opacity. Boom. Now, in my workflow, once I do this, I am able to export this. And now let's go ahead and show you the screen. Export, publish and export. If I want a time lapse, let me check out the time lapse. Let me see what it took to get this. There it goes. Boom, boom, boom. And so this is only showing you what I did on this uh, machine because I started this drawing on a different um, iPad. So you don't see all the other strokes. It's only showing you the time lapse of what I've done in this machine, in this particular um, iPad. I have several iPads. So I can do an export as, and there's the name, and I want the format to be PDF. I want it to be PDF because when I export as a PDF, then I'm able to import it to Adobe Illustrator and it turns that PDF into vectors. I can see all my anchor points. I can see my paths. I can see my handles. I can change colors. I can, and, and I draw different parts and different layers so that when I make a change, I change everything on that layer and it's in uh, uh, Illustrator can control it and make adjustments as if I had started it and worked on it in Illustrator. To me, that's my benefit and that's where Adobe Fresco fits in my workflow. If you're not a vector illustrator or vector artist and you're more into the traditional tools, eh, maybe the um, uh, live brushes are cool. Maybe the pixel brushes are cool. If you have Photoshop, well, you don't need Fresco because you can use Photoshop. However, if you're on the iPad, Photoshop does not run the, on the iPad. There's some, another conversation about what Apple thinks a computer is. Um, but then you have to use other tools like Procreate and Affinity Designer, Affinity, Affinity Photo, and to get the work and do the work that you want. Um, what are those um, raster and live brushes options when it comes to apps and hardware? I don't know. I don't do that. Um, I'm a traditional artist when it comes to um, traditional uh, mediums like acrylics and uh, markers and pencils in real life. When it comes to digital, I've been so hard on this vector stuff that um, I know my workflow and I know what I need to do. And the only time I use a pencil to draw is when I'm in doing the initial sketch to get the idea out. After that, 
I try to get onto the vector as soon as possible so that the work that I'm doing, it ends up being in, in the final illustration or part of the, my process to get to the final illustration. Um, so that way I can always use that, use that artwork. And I'm a vector artist because some of the artwork that I create needs to be scalable. It needs to be scaled to the size of a building and vector artwork still looks sharp and clear. So let's get back to Fresco. So I'm done here. I go back to the image and there it is. And it's little by little, I'm going to color it in and it's saving. So this is the first um, drawing here, but the original DTM saves drawing came, the, first, the original fresco one came from a different iPad. So here I am playing with some other things that didn't I did not keep. And then uh, here's my other iCloud documents. So these other ones, the Quetzal right here on the right, uh, the the uh, make make that make that guy see what on the left there's a letter missing there sorry Ogin right here and mexica color those i drew on the surface and uh, as you can see it has a little cloud design a cloud icon on it because that means that that artwork is still in my creative cloud and not on this device so let's switch devices let me move over and now we're inside of the surface and as you can see in the top left it says um, Adobe Fresco pre-release and the question is can it export EPS file no no it cannot but it's not because the software can't do it it's because the hardware and that's where we have to also understand our tools the surface may be able to do a whole lot more with the same software than the ipad because the processing power and the ram necessary to to handle these tasks is not available on the ipad so you have to know your hardware but uh, just to clarify no it does not export eps which is fine because when you export as a pdf and you open an illustrator you have your layers still separated and you have your gradients in transparencies as the way you left them when you were on the iPad. So here we go. We're on um, um, the surface. As you can see on the top left, it says Adobe Fresco pre-release. These are the pieces that I've worked on here on my surface. And let's open one up. I got my, um, my um, surface pen. So I click on it. Boom, there it goes. Opening, it's gonna take its time. Boom, 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 bam, there it is. This is Adobe Fresco. And if you notice, the tools look the same. That's what I like about what they're doing here with the uh, Adobe's doing here with these apps is that they're starting to make sure that all the software looks the same. Some of you guys and gals and do not know this because you weren't there 20 years ago when we had a ton of software, just like today. But all this software was fighting to be top at the top. Corel. Macromedia, Adobe, and then a bunch of other stuff. And, uh, and so it, uh, when you had Photoshop, if you had Photoshop for your PC, it looked different than Photoshop on Mac. There were major differences in the way it looked. Fireworks, I think I've only used, no, I've, I've used Fireworks on both, on Mac and PC. And uh, Macromedia was the one handling Fireworks and Freehand Date. And then it turned into, then Adobe bought out Micromedia. And so now Illustrator became what it is today. Even though Illustrator was already on, uh, had, uh, had his own path. So as time's gone on, some of this software now is starting to look the same no matter which machine you're on. And it used to be, and back in the day, people would say, oh, I know how to use such and such, but on PC. Oh, I know how to use such and such, but on Mac. Now, you can't say that. Now, it all looks the same. It works the same. All the tools are there. Let me turn this on. Boom, there it goes. What am I missing here? And this is the original um, sketch that came that I brought in from, um, a, uh, from Sketchable on this surface here. So there you go. You can see now. I'm moving the layer to the top. So that you, and let me turn up the opacity, boom. So this was the sketch I brought in. This is how it came. So in my creative process is I need to have a sketch. 
I need to know what it, what I'm drawing looks like so that I can then uh, start analyzing the composition, the elements, and how everything's supposed to fit. I need to know the size also. So I need this to, needed this illustration to fit in a square. So that's why my canvas is a square. And that's why I'm making sure everything fits inside these edges. And once I have the elements that I need, I got some skulls down here. I have the model, the pinup. I have some of the um, muerte, Santa Muerte details on her face. Like, cool. Now I get to work on putting together the rest. And so I just like in my process that I showed you earlier when it comes to uh, DTM saves. My process is to start the outline first. Right now I'm just turning off layers. It'd be nice if there was an eyeball to the left of the layer so then I could just tap, tap, tap. Um, I'm going to do some of the feedback that we provide Adobe with. But there it is. There we go. Boom. We got the, the main layer the main drawing I got the skulls right here I can turn those off as you can see this is my process I'm showing you how I use Adobe Fresco in in that I do the I have the a layer for the drawing these are the skulls I draw out the skulls I have them in one layer I draw out the background and I have it in another layer there's that layer um, some of these things that are in this one layer right now, they came, they came together into that layer, but I drew all the things in, independent of each other in different layers so that I could get the idea just right, get the line work just right, just so that uh, in case I needed to erase something, I did not have to bother something in that layer already and, um, and, and I didn't want to, by mistake, erase something that I, I wanted to keep. So once I have all the elements the way I want to, then I can combine things in that layer and say, okay, cool, let's move on. So there it is. So now once I have um, the outline, I start either coloring in. I may start coloring in. Boom. Here goes the gold. Here goes some of the blue, some of the red, some of the brown, some of the highlights. And the uh, oh, lighter colors, lighter tones. Here go some of the green and red. And now let's work on some shading. Oh, that's the body. That was the body. Yep, that's I'm still shading. That's shading. There's more shading. And more shading. Then some highlights. Boom. Now we have a drawing that's coming together. Same thing with the skulls. Color. Highlights. Shadows. Shadows shadows and then finally the background i work on it in whatever order i want however oh yeah let's turn that on there we go however it's better for me um uh, to have these different layers doesn't matter which piece i start with and this right here does not look right that was that does not look like it belongs like this and uh, this whole layer is wrong i probably did not use it and keep oh did i I don't know. Some, it doesn't doesn't read right. But the final artwork. Then, let me uh, get out of this piece here because it is unstable. It is a pre-release, and so you're liable to lose work. That's what happens when you are um, testing artwork. Okay, 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 okay. So let's go here. Let me show you what the final looks like. Uh, stick them there. No, went the wrong way. There we go. I finished this artwork for um, our, uh, our show that tours around the country. And at the end of the day, here's what it looked like. It, uh, it has um, a title on the bottom left. Got the background. Yes, the orange is there. I don't know, I remember why I even did that, but it's going to stay. For now, I did adjust some of the colors uh, so that they're not so dark. Because now when I open it in Illustrator, now I have gradients and things that I can work on to make it better. Here are, um, this is just saying this only piece right here. 
and I have others. There's some uh, the other ones that go with this long piece, another one, and uh, and that's how the whole layout looks together. And that's what my, my workflow. Here's how I started. These are the sketches, and I go through my process and sketches to get to the vector and then the final. So I hope some of this was helpful. I hope you uh, figured out whether or not uh, um, uh, whether or not Adobe Fresco is for you. I'm a vector artist. Adobe Fresco fits. If I was not using Adobe Fresco because it just came out on Tuesday and before that I was using it, but as a pre-release, you know. And uh, but if so, and now that only started happening early this year. Uh, but if I was if it wasn't Fresco, then it was going to be Adobe Draw. And the, the, there's um this artist, Mr. Mr. Soul, also mentioned something about mobility. And uh, and I, I like being a mobile artist. I like taking my stuff with me, going other places and working out of other places. And uh, and so wherever I go, I take my surface and I take my iPad. And so I want the option of being able to sit down and start sketching anytime I want without having to have my computer. And I have a big Cintiq over here on the side. And I want to be able to work without having to have the big Cintiq and having to carry around. I also have a smaller one, but it's still, it's like it's a whole lot of connections, a whole lot of gear. And so because you can get an iPad nowadays for $300, yes, you can get an iPad for $300. You can get, uh, I think they're like 350 400 bucks. But at the end of the day, you add the Apple Pencil to it, boom, for $450, you can get an iPad. And because the, the, the price point is access, so accessible nowadays, you want tools that are going to help you be creative with these tools, with, these, with this hardware. So, yes, we have to take into consideration that for mobile artists, for artists who want to be able to draw on the go and create from anywhere, then you start considering, well, what tools are there to help me in my process? And for me, I did figure that out a long time ago that Adobe Draw was it. And with the cool thing with Adobe Draw, and this is the last little bit that I'm going to talk about when it comes to Adobe Draw, is that in Adobe Draw, where'd you go? You can export right into um, uh, Illustrator. And so I'm going to prepare my Adobe Illustrator. I need to make sure it's uh, running because I move around. So there are many different computers that uh, I, want this, I want this to work here. Um, uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Cancel. Okay, cool. So Adobe Illustrator is up. Oh, here's the file for um, the uh, stuff that I was doing. It was in this machine. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, so check this out, right? So let's go here, DTM, that's me. I'm in Adobe Draw. And look, once I'm done with my drawing, I go up to export. It says Adobe, right here in the top right, it says Adobe Desktop Apps. It says Illustrator. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. It's turning, it's turning, it's turning. And so now, wait for it, wait for it. It should pop up in here. Because I am on the Creative Cloud. Yep, I am. Let's see. Let's wait. See how long it needs to go to space and come back. And I'm about to send off a text because I have to. Come on. Come on. You're making me a liar now. Oh, that's down too far. Come on, come on. Where is that? And is it popping up on another one of my computers? Because I am signed in, right? Yes, I am signed in. Double checking that I'm signed in, yes. What is this here? Uh, you're making me a liar right now. People are waiting. We're on the internet. We're live. Come on. Let me see if I can uh, open a new, just something, just for the fun of it while we wait on this to come because it is on the internet I do I do know that I have it so that's that piece we're just looking at this piece now but I'm waiting for it to pop up in here there it goes look at that 
It took a while. All right. The pick of you is rad. Thank you, Ross. Thank you. Appreciate you, bro. So there it is. Two machines. There's the iPad. In this iPad, I did this drawing of myself. I exported it out to Illustrator. And on Illustrator, it popped right in so I can work on it some more. Let me get rid of that. Boom. There it is. Okay. Tell me that's not amazing. Okay. Tell me. Somebody say to me, Dan, in my workflow, that sucks. This is the part where I, this video is, this is the message that this video is all about. I want them artists to look at their workflow to figure out their process and understand what that they can determine what software works for what for themselves yes or no and move on not whether it's one particular app the killer or the key of the ipad pro anyways um i hope uh, this was cool if you have a comment please leave it a question please leave it i like to answer questions in a demo or tutorial that I can publish online. So if you have a great question, if you have any question, I could turn that into a great video. All right, this DTM Delta Tango mic, art life all day. These are my devices, these are my machines. And man, let me tell you, I enjoy drawing on my tablets, on my Surface, on my iPad. There is no one better than the other. It's about what is it for, what can I do with it? And I'll grab the device that's going to help me get there. Talk to y'all later. Stay tuned for more. Art Life All Day. Delta Tango Mike. Vector Maestros. Art is King underscore ATL. We have YouTube channels. Vector Maestros and Art is King. Talk to y'all later. Peace. Hey, thanks for watching. This is Delta Tango Mike. Find me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter under Delta Tango Mike. And please tag me in your work. I'd like to see what you're working on. Check out some more tutorials and demos at the YouTube channel Vector Maestros. And if you're interested in art business discussions and interviews with artists, check out the YouTube channel Art is King. Until next time, peace out.